it's a living being. It needs to photosynthesize somehow. So it doesn't taste very good. To be honest, I can't remember when I watered this one last. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today we're going to be talking about the Chemidoria elegans, also known as the parlor palm. Other names for this beauty are bamboo palm, good luck palm, or neanth palm, so you may know it as one of those. But these are some hardy, low maintenance plants. They are pretty easy. Parlor palms have been cultivated since the Victorian era and they have been because they give off this like gorgeous tropical vibe and they like just instantly add a bit of flourish to any sort of home. They're fairly slow growing plants. You can really keep them in the same spot in your house for quite a long time before they grow out of it. And their max height indoors is probably about a meter, maybe three or four feet or so. So they don't get all that big indoors, which it's fun, it's, it's fine. It, it does what it needs to do. <laughs> so really quickly before I get into the care of these beautiful parlor palms, parlor pla, not again. <laughs> Last week it was the player plants and now it's the parlor palms. I just can't do this. <sighs> oh, my dyslexia is coming out. <laughs> I just want to say if you like this video please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment about other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future and subscribe for more. Right, let's get into it. When it comes to water they very much prefer to be too dry rather than too wet. Overwatering will not be tolerated with these ones. It's best to water when the soil is dry about halfway down in the pot. That tends to be about once a week in the spring and summer and maybe every two or two and a half weeks in the autumn and winter. To be honest, I can't remember when I watered this one last. I sometimes forget to water it and I mean, it's totally fine. It's living its best parlor palm life. So, I mean, it just goes to show that they can totally tolerate underwatering. I genuinely forget about this one and it seems to be fine. A sign of overwatering is if you notice that the tips of the leaves are going like brown and a little bit soft and droopy, like mushy. That just means you watered it a little bit too frequently. So maybe cut back on the frequency of watering just a little bit. If you're noticing lots of yellowing leaves, that means it is probably being underwatered. So if that's the case, give it a little bit more water in. It should perk up. So of course, bright indirect light is ideal for parlor palms, but they can tolerate and adapt to much lower light, which is amazing. We love a plant that can handle a bit more low light situations, stick it in a dark corner, fine. I do wanna say though, low light does not mean no light. It still does need light, but it can handle a lot less than many other plants. There still needs to be a window in the room it's in, or it needs to have a grow light on it or something every now and then, because it does need some light. It's not like, it's a living being. It needs to photosynthesize somehow. So don't just shove it in a windowless closet or like a bathroom with no windows or anything. It will not like that. It does need to have some, but low is tolerable. They also aren't big fans of direct sunlight. They will much prefer bright and direct. So if you can keep them out of direct sunlight, do. And that's why parlor palms are so great for rooms with north facing windows because in the Northern Hemisphere, those aren't gonna get much, if any, direct sunlight through the window at all. You're just getting atmospheric light. So I keep this one in a pretty dark corner, to be honest. It actually lives on this shelf, like just past this hand thing. It's probably the darkest corner of this room because the window is there. It's on the same wall, so it doesn't get any like light through it. So it's definitely a low light corner. So this is just a quick example to show you how dark the corner really is. Right now I have two lights on it and I'm gonna turn them off and you'll see how dark it is. It's really dark. It is really dark in here, given it's a cloudy day. So like it's darker than it would be if it was sunny, but still it's pretty dark. But as you can see, I've got my 
handy dandy grow lights on there and those just give it a little bit of extra boost. So they're on from about 4 p.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. every day, which I think it really likes that little bit of extra boost. It kind of pulls it out of its dark corner for a few hours in the evening, which is good. Parlor palms can actually also summer outside, but if you do do that with them, you wanna make sure that you're not putting them in a place with direct sun. You wanna make sure that it is a shady area, otherwise they'll get burnt and we don't want that. Just, we don't want our plants to be burnt. Average household temperatures should be fine for parlor palms. If you're comfortable in your home, they'll be comfortable in your home. Their ideal is 18 to 27 degrees Celsius, which is 65 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, like I said, pretty normal temperatures for your house. They can tolerate a little bit lower as well, but they're not gonna enjoy it as much and it could stunt their growth. So ideally keep it in that range and you won't have to worry. Also, if you do let these summer outside, you wanna make sure you're bringing them in before the temperatures start to drop again in autumn. So just be sure to do that. Oh, it's also really important to keep them away from big fluctuations in temperature. So hot and cold vents and drafts and stuff, they're a no-no. So don't put them by those. Parlor bombs do enjoy a little bit of higher humidity, but average will also suffice. Like, they're pretty tolerant plants all around. Just be careful that in the winter, the humidity doesn't get too low. If you've got your central heating and stuff like that on, that'll dry out the air. So especially in the winter, you might need to boost the humidity a bit. You can do that by one, getting a humidifier. You could also put it on a pebble tray. You can group it with other plants which naturally boost the humidity in the area, or you can give it like daily mists and stuff to kind of boost the humidity in the zone. Their ideal spot in your house for humidity is like a bathroom or a kitchen or something because those rooms naturally have more humidity through like showers or cooking and stuff. So if you can light-wise put it in one of those rooms, they will thank you for it because they will like that little bit of extra boost as well. If you notice that the tips of your leaves are kind of getting brown and crispy, that means that you're probably not giving the plant enough humidity. So if that is the case, boost it in some way and it will thank you. Rich but well draining soil is ideal for parlor palms. They don't need anything too special. Average potting soil should be okay. And because they're slow growers, you won't need to repot all that often. Like maximum, you should be repotting once a year, but it'll probably end up being more like every two or three years, especially if you have it in a lower light spot, it's gonna grow a bit slower. Be very, very careful when you are repotting though. They do have very fragile roots and they don't like to be disturbed. So when you are repotting, just be super gentle on the root ball and maybe don't rough up the roots too much when you are repotting, maybe leave more soil on than you would normally just because they'd rather not be disturbed and it might put the plant into a little bit of shock by repotting it. Also, when you are repotting, you need to make sure you're putting it in a pot with drainage holes. Drainage holes are key. You can see mine has loads of roots sticking out of its drainage holes and I just have it in a cash pot and it seems to like that quite a lot and it still looks really pretty which is nice but yeah drainage is really important otherwise it could lead to more root rot and we don't want that because root rot leads to death so no parlor palms are fairly light feeders they don't need all that much like maximum in the growing season, you should fertilize them like once a month, but you could even do less than that. And that is in the spring and summer. You should not fertilize at all in the autumn and winter because they go into a bit of a dormancy period where they're not putting out new growth. So they really don't need the extra nourishment then. Also, it's best to fertilize them with half strength fertilizer as to not burn the roots. I do that with liquid gold leaf and it seems to have liked it. I definitely got some new growth over the summer. Yeah, it's fine. So unfortunately, unlike a lot of houseplants, parlor palms cannot be propagated through stem or leaf cuttings. 
They can only be propagated through seeds. For your plant to flower and seed indoors, it's pretty unlikely. So if you want more parlor palms, your best bet is probably just to buy more plants, unfortunately, but nah, eh, eh. they're not terribly expensive. They're fairly cheap and you can find them in most house plant shops. So it's not the end of the world that you can't propagate them. Another amazing thing about parlor palms is that they are not toxic to cats or dogs or humans. So these are totally pet safe plants if you want to have them around your pet and they give them a little nibble. It's not gonna be the end of the world. You could eat this plant. It doesn't taste very good, so maybe don't, but like, it's not an issue if it gets ingested by pets or children, which is muy bueno. So that is it. That is all you need to know about how to take care of your parlor palm plant. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up down below and comment on other houseplants you'd like me to talk about in the future. And of course, subscribe for more. So thank you very much and I will see you next time. Bye. I mean, that didn't really work, but like, fine. <laughs>